Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're trying to understand why we need to have an identification number and what are the benefits, you know, that we should be looking out for if, in the, if, the, if there's ever an ideal situation, what an identification number should do for you. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So, Ikeme said, you are talking about financial inclusion with telcos. Can you quickly just wrap up on that? Then I'll, um, Tammy will come in with her question. Okay, then. So, basically, what I was trying to say was, um, the, the the current problem we have with respect to you know capturing enough Nigerians and rebuilding and broadening out you know the limits mm -hmm. of the formal economy was the same issue right that the mm -hmm. CBN had with driving and deepening financial inclusion. We had a situation where there were just about thirty nine million you know Nigerian bank accounts, and we know that we're anything from one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty million people, right? And in the end, policymakers said. What is the best logical starting point for getting the most amount of Nigerians participating in the financial system? It was the telcos. The telcos still have that build. They still have that rollout. They still have the they largest have the you know, a, a database right, of Nigerians possible. So it makes sense to incorporate them in you know, this current effort right, to get every Nigerian captured. And you know, ho hopefully the framework for engagement that you know, and um, policy makers are able to come up with, right, you know, is efficient enough, is seamless enough that, you know, we don't get to see a lot of you know, the crowds that are pulling at um, MIMSI centers, you know, which is you know, really aggravating the you NCPC could, yeah. and, you know, you know uh, those Nigerians who are trying to, you know, you know be helped um, to, 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 to be safety conscious, right, in, um, you know, in a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic situation. Yeah. All right, so, Temi, can you come in? Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Kemesi. So um, you've touched on some of the positives of the identification. Mm -hmm. I would just like to ask you about a negative or a possible negative, if you see it as a possibility. Do you also see breach of privacy arising? I say this because, you know, so for example, you fill up a form, a small form somewhere for some organization, and somehow in a few minutes, you find that other people who you did not give the you say you both right messages. to reach to reach out to you are reaching out to you already <laughs> and that's just a little case of which now there's ac accumulated data a lot of data about nigerians do you see that um, one of the negatives that may come out of this is um, a breach of privacy do you think that this is a possible factor fantastic i, I mean in the nigerian context it's it's always a possibility right um our uh, uh, data, uh, our data privacy uh, provisions mm. of the legal framework around that is still evolving, right? Um, so depending on uh, the the number and the kind of lawyers that that you run, you know, into and you ask them questions around this, right? Um, you get varying levels of satisfaction with you know sort of our current framework. Now I know you're a lawyer, and I should say um i'm also a colleague right so you know i understand you know from a legal perspective what sort of the privacy um you know in what sort of the legal and privacy implications of you know what we're currently doing you know are right and and again this is where um you know this is where one having a robust framework right you know as sort of at the federal level but also at the state level because you know a lot of times you look at the legal provisions and they are geared towards managing how the government and you know formal institutions use data, um, but but very little is said about how more informal setups, you know, for example, recruitment agencies, right, or even and, and not just the formal recruitment agencies. So you know how you have a small business, and sometimes you put a call out, you know, on Twitter or Facebook or WhatsApp for say a personal assistant. Oh, we're having trouble with um, Ikemesi's network. Okay, so let's quickly take some comments before we're able to connect with him. Temi, you take yours. Um, Temi, are you there? Is Temi there? Okay, maybe we lost both I of them. Okay, quickly them. quickly take your comments. Okay, um, Sali said, Nigeria must see this as a very important process. We need to plan better. The security, especially in the north, has to improve. Mm. Another person said, the process according to the government will be decentralized. 
hopefully immediately to help most of us. I cannot suffer for it. Okay, so um, this is Leia. He says, as simple as transportation, if the government can know how many people stay in Ikorodu, for example, they can come up with more alternative solutions to improve commute. That is for a very serious government, though, with, <laughs> with an emoji with laughter. That's Leia. Someone says, my heart goes out to, oh, that's true, family of NS Azuzu, um, may he rest in peace, that's um, Chioma. Um, thank you, Choma, for that. He, I saw the um, pictures today that he passed on. Then, this is from Ade. He resides in the UK. He said, good evening, ladies. It's good to have NIN because it allows the government to have a good birth and death control. I mean, yeah. you mentioned Which death mentioned as well. Earlier. Why can't we do it online to avoid COVID-19 casualties and queue at the NIN office? I was going to ask uh, Kemesit that. The government wants Nigerians to have NIN but no cards to issue. Yes, because when I did mine, they said it, it's only slip, that they're no longer um, issuing, uh, issuing cards cards. anymore. They'll just give me the slip. Um, only, um, so he says, I know of someone that got his NIN over four years now on paper, on a paper, no card issued yet. My dear, going forward, they say they're not even issuing at all. So why can't the government, that's the third question, is why can't the government use the BVN to issue NIN? Because most Nigerians have a bank account. That's Ade. Yeah. So when I went to register for my NIN, the, the lady, the first question she asked me was to get my BVN. So when she got my BVN, she logged it into the system and it brought out everything. Oh, yeah, my, yes. So what she did with my NIN form was to double check that what I had filled was exactly so maybe if my address has changed or some other small changes she now made the changes but it, it was from a bvn point that they fed into you know the nin uh, what's it called the nin um, slip yeah. so there's a very very interesting comment from benson this one is a holy ghost comment <laughs> let me read it well is that nin is also important to the almighty god okay to bless abraham he um he had to count the stars that he may know the scale of what to expect and plan. Thank you, Bernstein. He says, is there anyone who, who, uh, who is planning to build a new house doesn't first sit and figure the cost so you all know if you can complete it. If you only get the foundation laid and then run out of money, you're going to look pretty foolish. So everyone passing by will poke you, uh, poke fun, uh, or make fun of you. And he started something that he started something that he didn't finish. finish. So you count the cost first before you go into. So NIN is supposed to be prophetic, mm -hmm. where you know the number of Nigerians that you have, so that when you are planning infrastructure, you're building rail, like um, the comment that Leia said about, yeah, about Ikorodu, yeah. you know, um, transport system, rail system, the healthcare system. You know the number of capacity in Ikeja environment. So you yeah. know the capacity of hospital mm -hmm. to build at that region. But I think we have Ikemesit back and Temi. Temi, if we have you back, let's quickly take your comment and I'll come to Ikemesit. Oh, okay. I think we're still having troubles with them. So, um, so Benson further went, sent a me another message. He says, please, what is the participation of the Nigerian Populations Commission on the NIN process? <laughs> That's a jam question. We're going to ask the KMSC. We're supposed to ask, because the KMSC is supposed to be, in my head today, I'm not, I don't even want to think it through. He's supposed to be the expert. He will tell us what everything. he was doing. So, I mean, if you look at what the, the number is supposed to do for you, you yeah. know, like a social security, in fact, there was also something that we have not even mentioned. Insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally, all these issues that we're talking about, high cost of health, in health care, education, most of these things are driven by the insurance company. But yeah. you see, I mean, if I wish Uti were here, she would tell you, most insurance company, this one will feel from today. You see, I cannot remember the date of birth that I used. Yeah, you know, the so last they, one. Do you understand? So th these are things that once we get it right, yeah. right? Because we've always said that, we always assume, oh, we are over 200 million people. Have we truly Have we counted, counted our numbers? It actually you reminds know? me of when we did census. Um, mm. The last census I participated in, um, I think I was in GSS 3. I can't remember, but I think I was in GSS 3 or something. When they came to the house, everyone had to stay home. And then they did the whole calculation thing. Mm. And it was even it was when we started talking about this name that I, remind, I, remind, I, I, um, I remembered remember. that, oh... We actually counted back then. That means whatever figure they are putting on the internet or telling us that, oh, these are the number of people in Nigeria. It's just, yeah, it's it's just, just assumption. Assumption. They're just assuming. <laughs> it can't say what it is. I think we have it can't say back. Do we have Tebi back now? 
Okay, so it yes, yes. yes, you do. Okay, tell me quickly. Take both your questions or your comments. Then I'll come to Kemes it. All right. So the first one is from Angela, and the person says the need for identity cannot be overemphasized. I work in financial services, and this can greatly improve access to credit, which is a real-time indicator of economic performance. Now, the next comment is from Angela. She says, NIN, yes, good. Please tie it to childbirth, issuing death certificates, and so on and so forth. Let it be an ongoing process. Thank you so much. Um, um, the, the question that was posed, Ikeme said that, please, what is the participation of Nigerian Population Commission, uh, Commission on this NIN process? So I'll, I'll give you that question, but I want to pick from what um, Temi just said, because I said something. I said when the government announced that we, need, we all needed an NIN, right? Why did they not say mm -hmm. from that February that it was announced 2019, I think that was, I believe, when it was announced, why did they not say any child that is, that is um, um, being birthed at the hospital should be immediately issued? And, and at least we know that from that date forward to today, every child that has been born in this country would have an identification number. Then we can now start gradually um, uh, closing up on the gap when we backtrack to all the people that have not had it. Why didn't they do that? And what's the role of the nation, national commissions right, in this, the population commission? Okay, so to answer your first question, why didn't they do that? I, I have no idea, to be very honest. Uh, the, uh, it's, so first and foremost, right, the NIMSI's mandate predates this administration, predates the last one and the one before that, right? And this goes way back to, you know, the tail end of uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo's first term. So I personally have been captured by the system twice. I first did my... I first, I, I first registered for my name in 2005, 13. I think, oh, okay. my or mind. thereabouts, mm. when the very first, yeah, when the very first, you know, version of the exercise, right, was founded. So you could have had a situation where two separate pillars of onboarding are happening at the same time. Mm. The number of Nigerians that have been born between 2005 and 2020 is in the millions those people went on uncaptured. Like you said, the announcement of this latest version of the exercise, right, um, occurred, right, just a little under two years ago. Yeah. We could have also used that as an opportunity to capture. And the point is, there are thousands of Nigerians that are being born in this country every day. We have one of the highest birth rates on the continent. We have one of the highest birth rates in the world, right? And so... An exercise as to capture the number of Nigerians that already exist as is will still leave out a lot of other people who are being born every day. And so, you know, to 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 the point that um, one of your your viewers made around this being tied to you know to birth and death, you know, and and voting and you know you know other forms of you know social and economic participation. That viewer is absolutely right. And this is supposed to be the entire point of name. It's supposed to be that one-stop shop. So instead of, you know, one set of people asking for your driver's license, another set asking for your international passport, people asking for either your license or your international passport, and all the identifications in between, we just have one reference point. We just have your name. We your name, we know where you were born, we know where you live, we know where you schooled, we know what your credit score is, you know, we know how many bank accounts we have. We know if you, you know, owe the system, if you've taken out, you know, a mortgage or a loan or a business loan or a personal, you know, credit facility or anything, right? And it gives a decent snapshot. And then for law enforcement, you know, they know, you know, where you are, you know, you're carrying out transactions. So you and I are in Lagos right now. We could be in Abuja, we could be in Yola or in Port Harcourt at a moment's notice, right? So in case... There's any Nigerian who is involved in you know, nefarious activity. You can you you have a footprint of you know where they've been in the country and what they've been up to. Absolutely, that's what this is you supposed know supposed to, to achieve. Okay, so what's uh, the Nigerian pop, um, the National Populations Commission? Yeah, go yeah. ahead quickly, quickly. Okay, great. You know what's their position? They were part of the initial pilot scheme, but it, it appears as though you know you know, they've, they've fallen through the cracks. And, you know, and so, and, and this is, 
again, for, you know, an emerging democracy like us, you know, these are part of the issues that, you know, from a policy standpoint, we need to address. How do we get all of the agencies that are necessary to solve a particular issue mm -hmm. in the same room mm -hmm. and working on the same problems mm -hmm. together? So you don't have a situation where, you know, you have a director general of the Na National Population Commission coming up two, three, four years down the line and saying, oh, we can't use NIN for this. That and NIN is not You have to do another to. one. Oh, God. Sadly, we ran out of time. But quickly, tell me in one minute. Tell me, let me hear you in one minute. If you were to just, you know, give your final comments on this, then I'll come to Inkechi. Okay. I mean, I'll just say that it, data is very good for planning. And so the idea of NIN is very important. But just as our guest rightly mentioned, it's also important to look into issues that may arise, like the negatives, like breach of data that may become that would naturally just happen or, or may happen as a result of this so i hope that someday we have time to take a no we have to come, we have to come back with uh, ekms for a part two but quickly jennifer <laughs> but i'll leave him to give me the final word okay so um NIN is important and uh, we've all stated the benefits of NIN. but um one issue i have is the fact that we still use paper hmm. i've had my um, um name card for my sleep I think for almost five or six years now, and I still don't have a permanent card. Anything can happen to that slip of paper. So well, I, they, need it. To, they, actually no need, they need to look into <laughs> this and give us a permanent card. <laughs> Someone says the need, requires, um, adequate pro the need process requires adequate funding with the pending strike by NIN staff due to payment issues. Are the government really serious about this? If there is no funding yet, they may... Uh, they make it mandatory. So if you were going to give a quick one-minute advice or like 30 seconds advice to the government, um, a chemist, it, what would that be? You know, Since we already know we've established the importance of NIN, what would that be? How can they make this process a bit more seamless? Okay, I mean, get the telcos involved, right? Let them deploy their agent networks. Get telcos and, you know, um, you know those who are at the leading edge of providing financial services for people who are not really financially included so mm -hmm. you know the you know the pagas and all of the other agent commissions right who have very broad agent networks get them on board to be able to sign ppo people digitize the entire process Simple. we have portable digital gear yeah. that can take people's you know digital. you know fingerprints yeah. and get all of all of this out get paper out of the system extend the process make mm. this indefinite we don't need a deadline yes. to make this happen Thank we're you. a big country there are a lot of us extend this extend the duration for Thank making this you so much you can better better way to wrap it up honestly they just need to extend it because to. yeah you can't do all of this in like one year <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you ladies thank you chemistry thank you tammy thank, thank you, you. An Jennifer. Pleasure. all right so ways was birthed from the need to inform inspire influence lives towards action and this year we're starting our csr focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. Now, if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and tell all your friends to keep their eyes on Waze and follow us on all our social media handles as this is going to be an all-year-round engagement. In case you missed today's quote, here it is again, very short and simple. You can't build a society purely on interest. You need a sense of belonging. So we all need to be captured in Nigeria. You know, our data needs to be. <laughs> but we didn't even touch on diasporans. God will help us. We'll, talk, we'll bring a part two of this. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs>